Welcome back to the Pursuit of Accuracy. I'm Josh. Today we're going to look at how I'm cleaning my rimfire rifles in 2024. If you've seen the other video that I posted about a year ago, I have slightly changed my methods. I'm always looking to get a little bit more efficient. As you can see behind me, there are several rimfires around here that need clean quite often. So I'm always working at getting this done more effectively and more importantly, more efficiently. So I'm gonna show you today how exactly I go about that. So first things first, we need some tools. A toothbrush, a small toothbrush, or the gun cleaning specific ones, they help. I do like to have a pick handy. These pointy cotton swabs, they come in handy for cleaning out around the barrel channel. Of course, a bore guide. Now, whichever brand you choose based on your rifle, that's up to you. I use the Bortec and they work really well. I have an action cleaning rod from Bortec. Now this one does not swivel and I like that because this is what I work the chamber area with. Then of course, the big swivel type one here from Bortec. This is the 22 Rimfire specific model. I uh, absolutely love this cleaning rod. We're gonna need a chamber brush. And for the rim fires, I like these patches, but any patch will work. But I do like the one and one eighth inch patches. They're a little bit of a tighter fit. And of course, we're gonna be rocking the test long because uh, we're gonna be able to show you guys what the chamber looks like before and after. And this is 100% a necessary tool for me to use while I'm cleaning this. And this is how I've kind of developed my cleaning method to what it is now by using that bore scope. This time I'm gonna be showing you this system from Bullet Central. This is the Thoro Flush and Thoro Clean. Uh, a lot like the Bortec products, they really have no scent at all whatsoever. And this stuff flat out works. It's good for rim fire and center fire. And I've had a lot of success with these and quite honestly, when I reach down to pick up either this or the Bortec products we used last time, it's really about what my hand hits first because both of these work really well. All right, so we've got the bore scope in here and we're gonna go into the chamber. That's really what we're worried about. And you can see there, yeah, it's not the worst it's ever been, but uh, it's not exactly clean. And then the barrel is looking pretty heavily fouled. So you can see what we're working with there. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Teslong. They are sponsoring this video today. And uh, I've been using the Teslong stuff for, I don't know, a year and a half, maybe two years now. I had the other model, I went to the NTG 400H because it has that tunable focus on the rod. And you can see how crystal clear that image was that we we're looking at. So really appreciate them for helping us out here on the channel, bringing this video to you guys and for making a really good product that's made my life a ton easier. Because like I said, all this for me has revolved around being able to see results. And what I mean is I can check on my cleaning process and look at that chamber and see when it's clean and that's when I stop my cleaning. You can see there kind of where we started. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is always just push like two patches down the barrel that are gonna be wet patches. So if you were using the Bortec stuff, that would be when you would wanna probably use your Rimfire blend. Um, we are gonna be using the Thoro Flush And we don't need to drown these, but I do like a nice wet patch for this first one. And that's just to remove the heavy fouling. You can see there that we've got quite a lot of heavy fouling in here. So that was pretty wet. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and push a dry patch behind that. So those are the only two patches that I'm going to push until the very end. So we're gonna move those out of the way and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bore mop here and I'm gonna take some of this Thoro Clean and I'm kinda just gonna give it a little bit here. And you don't wanna make this soaking wet. I just like to get kind of a little light coating on this mop. It's gonna make a mess here in your bore guide, but I'm just gonna push that just into the chamber and then we're gonna let that sit. And I'm only gonna let that sit a couple minutes, but uh, what I do in the meantime is I take my bolt and my toothbrush and I'm just gonna kinda scrub this guy off. I'm not gonna get into a deep clean on this, but I'm just gonna get that bolt nice and clean. All right, so it maybe quite hasn't been 
all the five minutes, but that carbon ring wasn't too bad. So we're gonna take that little bore mop off and I'm going to go ahead and put on my nylon brush. And we're not gonna try and make this like a new full-time job for ourselves, but just gonna give this a few brushes. It doesn't take a whole heck of a lot and it uh, certainly doesn't need much more than a nylon brush. All right. So that should be enough and now it's time to run another wet patch down and that's just going to clean up this fouling that we just made by scrubbing that with a nylon brush. So if all goes to plan, this is going to be pretty much the end of it. And you can see by that patch, we did knock off quite a bit more fouling there. So let's take a look with a bore scope and we're gonna see where we are. All right. Well, it's cleaned it up quite a bit. So we're gonna go and do one more round of this. So again, we're just gonna put a little bit more of the thorough clean on here and we're gonna let this sit for maybe one or two minutes. We'll scrub it again and then we should be all cleaned up. All right, so we're about two minutes in. I'm getting impatient. So we're gonna go ahead and swap back to our nylon brush again. And patch number four certainly looks like it should have gotten the rest of that out. All right, so we're gonna take a look with a bore scope here, see where that got us. And we are looking nice and shiny. And I don't know that you would want much more than that out of this guy. All right, so with four total patches and a bore mop and a brush, we completely clean everything I'm gonna clean on the barrel. And now we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup here around our barrel chamber. Just some quick cleanup, we're not doing a total strip. What I really wanted to convey to you guys is that I'm not actually trying to clean the entire barrel, I'm just cleaning the chamber. I'm allowing the barrel to stay as fouled as it can. That's why we only push four total patches. Most of the cleaning effort I have put in went into the chamber and I found that to be very consistent for me, especially in my PRS guns. So again, all we're gonna do is take one of these Q-tips and I'm going to come in here into right around where the barrel meets the action. And I'm just going to soak up any of that cleaner that we had in there and clean out any debris from lubrication from the bullets and any kind of trash that I see in the action. So this doesn't have a ton of rounds on it or I would probably clean and oil the bolt, but it is fairly clean. This probably has, I don't know, five or 600 rounds on it. Um, I've been shooting it and all the testing, so that's kind of why I'm cleaning it now. It's had a bunch of different lubrication types thrown at it for that testing. But if you were doing a deeper clean, I also like to take my rag here. I'll put some cleaner and lubricant on it and I'll run it in from the back of the action all the way out through here and just kind of pull that through and get rid of any debris or things that are collecting. I clean the outside of the bolt. And what I'll typically do is I'll actually grease these lugs here. I'll oil the body of the bolt. Um, this part of the bolt will get oiled and I will grease the lugs. And that keeps this action running really smooth for me. And you can hear how little resistance we have going on here. I mean, this action has always been really smooth, but the greasing the lugs, I think, is a big part of that. Yeah, so there you have it, guys. Uh, this is as much as I would clean a rifle on any given day in between shooting or matches. And again, you know, we used four patches and a couple of Q-tips. I used to patch these to death, and I was blowing through patches, Q-tips, rags and all these things. With my new approach of basically just cleaning the chamber, I'm really able to cut down on time, 
how much material it takes to do this. I've had these two bottles for probably almost a year now, and I've been using them since I came back from Missouri, and I still have over half a bottle left of each one of those. You don't need a lot of it. And again, big thanks to the guys at Teslong for sponsoring this video. You know, I've been using this stuff for quite a long time. You saw me use it here. I'm using the Teslong every time I clean my rifles. If you have a precision rimfire or a precision rifle, pistol or whatever, and you're not using a bore scope, then that's something you should probably add to your collection in 2024 because these things are invaluable tools. And yeah, there's a little bit of upfront money with this, but considering how often and aggressively I was cleaning before I got this to actually fine tune my method of how I need to clean, I'm actually saving a lot of money in the long run because I'm barely using anything here to clean these and I'm saving myself a ton of time. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that what you saw here today helps you with your cleaning methods on your precision rim fires. And if you've got some useful information about cleaning, maybe you do it differently than I do, leave that down in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you on the next one.